Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Medieval Reader. So I haven't done a recent reads in a long time, so I want to talk about all of the books that I've read in the past month, month and a half, actually. Uh, I will not be including the Shakespeare plays that I've been reading. I do weekly reviews for each of those plays, so you can go check those out if you're interested. But I want to talk about the other things that I've read. So first, I would like to begin with two plays by Molière, who was a 17th century playwright. I will include all of the information for all of the books down in the description so that you can look them up. Uh, many of these, actually all of these uh, plays that I'm going to be talking about are available in English and you could probably find them online too, so for free. So anyway, uh, the first is Les Précieuses Ridicules, which is translated as The Pretentious Young Ladies. I read it, of course, in French. Um, I gave it three, three out of five stars. It was one of Molière's more misogynistic plays, um, kind of in the same vein as Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew. It is not the same story at all. This play is actually ridiculing uh, a movement in Paris where women would gather together in academies, or salons as they were called, and discuss books and they wrote these enormous novels. I talked about Artemen recently, the longest novel ever written. It's over 13,000 pages. Uh, and so uh, Madeleine de Scudéry, who wrote that, belonged to one of these academies. And the women who were going and, and organizing these events were seen as a threat to the men. And you know, men were asking, what are these women doing when they're not around men? You know, why do these women write and read? And uh, you know, just another example of female education uh, being seen as a threat to patriarchy, uh, which is wonderful. So it is really uh, somewhat upsetting to see Molière ridiculing these women. But I wanted to read it on its own terms, so uh, there are two sisters, Magdalen and Katos, and they speak in all of this jargon. They are clearly not intelligent, learned women at all. Uh, and these two men, uh, Mascari and Jodelet, basically pretend that they are very wealthy men who are uh, courting Magdalene and Katos. And in this comedy, you get to see how ridiculous the two sisters are and um, it, it doesn't really read very well. It's, uh, there's a lot of slapstick, which I prefer to see on stage, so I'm sure that it would be entertaining to watch. But Molière actually wrote many one-act plays until he started writing five-act plays later. Uh, and this is one of his one-act plays. And one-act plays weren't really published um, because, uh, you know, they're not very long at all. Uh, so this play was actually first published decades after he was already performing them. The second Molière play that I read was Les Femmes Savantes, which is translated as The Learned Ladies. And that one I had a very interesting relationship with this time around. So the first time I read it, I gave it three out of five stars, just like Les Précieuses Ridicules, because I was like, oh, another mis misogynistic play. I thought it was funny, but I, I just couldn't, you know, give it any higher rating. It just was bothering me. I was like, I know it's the time period in which it was written, but I didn't find it funny. But then I reread it uh, recently, and this time I loved it. I gave it five out of five stars. I thought it was Fantastic. And I didn't feel that Molière was particularly targeting women. Um, or that, okay, I didn't feel that he was exclusively targeting women. Um, so you have a mother named Philamant who has two daughters. And one of her daughter's name is uh, Henriette. And Henriette is not interested in education. She just wants to be a good wife and a good mother. However, the other sister, I forget her name, she does want to be learned and um, she reads and writes and she uh, writes poetry in particular. And the mother is huge on this. So Philamant is um, basically one of these um, uh, salonniers, these women who run the salon. And she has a tutor named Trisotin. And the tutor, you know, Molière ridicules the tutor and Philamant and anybody who 
is falling for what Philomant and her whole household think is wisdom. Um, the exception is the father Chrysal and Henriette's suitor Clitendre. Um, so Clitendre wants to marry Henriette, but Philomant, the mother, thinks that uh, Clitendre should marry Trisotin instead, the, the tutor. And that's the reason why I gave the play a higher rating, was that I enjoyed the play, and I also felt that Molière is really ridiculing a certain type of learning. And so it's not just the women who are being ridiculous, but also uh, Trisotin, who is basically fueling all of this. Uh, and it read really well, though it's just a lot of really funny lines. Um, really quotable. Um, I thought it was a very tight play and I, I loved it for that. Then I read The Odyssey by Homer. Um, by the way, I'm not listing the books in order of when I read them, so I keep saying then, but actually I read The Odyssey... Well, I read The Odyssey before the Moliere plays, actually. Um, but anyway, I read The Odyssey. I made a spoilery discussion book chat about The Odyssey, which I will link below. I thought it was wonderful. I gave it four out of five stars. The reason why I couldn't give it five out of five stars is because I just always have problems with Athena being basically the one who is responsible for Odysseus' victory. And, and it is pretty violent. Um, I just couldn't believe <laughs> some of the things that Odysseus did. And yeah, I had some problems with that. But otherwise, it is, I mean, an incredible poem. And it was really interesting to think about it through the perspective of that whole hospitality tradition in the Mediterranean. I read Carolingian Empire by Heinrich Fichtenau. And it was translated from the German. I will include the translator. I forget off the top of my head who the translator was. This I gave two out of five stars to. This is an old, late 60s, I believe, uh, history of Charlemagne. And I like to read old histories to understand the history of historiography, um, basically the way in which history has been done in the past century, uh, seeing the development of historical criticism. And this book just hasn't aged well at all. Um, the author's personal opinions come through way too strongly in this history. He is clearly Protestant, which is fine, but it was so clear that he has so many problems with the way that religion was practiced at this period. And, and again, that's fine. It's just that I don't want praise or, or blame on the actual practices. If there's corruption, that can be pointed out. But to say, well, relic veneration was superstitious is a judgment on the actual practice, which isn't something that we would see in uh, scholarship today on Charlemagne. Um, and there were other things that were problematic. For example, he refers to non-Christians as heathens. <laughs> Don't think you could do that today. Um, you know, I'm right now reading uh, Johannes Fried's biography of Charlemagne and it is far superior. So um, I wouldn't recommend this book, but I'm glad that I read it because it shows how far we have come well, I say we, how far historians have come in the past um, 50 years even. I read Curtain by Agatha Christie, and this was a reread. It is in Hercule Poirot Mystery. Um, those are the only uh, Agatha Christie mysteries I've actually read. I haven't read the Miss Marple mysteries. I love Hercule Poirot, and this is definitely not a mystery you read first. This is definitely not you know, if you you don't know anything about Hercule Poirot, don't read Curtain. This is for those who love Hercule Poirot, who want to learn more about him. You, you get to know him the most intimately in this book, as well as Captain Hastings. Um, I gave it four out of five stars. It was definitely one that I'm glad that I reread. Captain Hastings is staying with a number of people, including his daughter Judith, at this house at Styles, And one of the people, according to Hercule Poirot, has killed five people and will probably kill a few more people and this person does and um poirot knows who to murder who the murderer is 
and Captain Hastings doesn't know why Poirot won't just tell him. And so uh, Hastings is trying to um, put together the clues and try to figure out, you know, who has done it. And while this is going on, he's having this very difficult relationship with his daughter. And he starts to think about what it means for him to be um, the father of an adult child. And, um, you know, he has some sexist views. Judith is this independent woman who's very um, sure of herself and her father who just doesn't feel comfortable with who Judith has become and he misses his daughter and it's just a really complicated mystery so I would really really recommend it to people who love Hercule Poirot and who want a book that explores his character. Um, I thought it was really really beautiful in parts and, and the mystery itself was you know unsolvable like all of Agatha Christie's mysteries but I, I'm fine with that. And I read We the Drowned by Karsten Jensen. This is definitely a book I have not reviewed on here and I should have, I, so I apologize for not having reviewed it earlier. It is a Danish uh, seafaring novel. Once again, I have forgotten who the translator is. Information in the down bar. But the first half of the book follows Albert Matson, who he starts out in school, he has this incredibly abusive teacher and it talks about how the teacher will um, physically abuse the students uh, to make them to men and then once they turn 16 or actually 15 they join, you know, they get on a ship and they go sailing and many of them die at sea and that's why it's called We the Drowned. Many of these men will die at sea and we learn a little bit about Albert Matson's father, uh, who was on a ship that was sunk by the Germans in this German-Danish conflict. And he was a prisoner of war for a time. And then when he returned, he just never was the same again. Um, and then he left and never came back. And so a lot of people believed that Albert's father had died. Um, Lorenz, I believe, is his name. And yet Albert, thinks that his father is alive and so he wants to go and find him and so the first half of the book follows Albert and the second half of the book follows Knut Hansen. I'm, I'm probably butchering their names. Um, which Knut is uh, a 15 year old uh, boy and he never, you know, whereas Albert we follow his whole life, we don't follow Knut's whole life. So he's a young man. Um, that, and that's why I really preferred the first half of the book because we get to see this man age and, and you know, you cover so many more decades than in the second half of the book. And Albert's also a really compelling character. Um, while this book is about these two men and, and their families and the women they leave behind, it's also about the transformation of the uh, ship industry in Denmark. And it's just so interesting to see how that affected the locals. Um, this was very much written in the tradition of the Odyssey, Moby Dick. There, there, there are certain allusions to those stories. Um, at times, it, it almost feels fairy tale like, but it's always very real. You always feel like you're encountering real characters. There was only a couple elements at the end of the book that felt too coincidental and so that's why I gave it four out of five stars but if you're looking for a good seafaring novel a good adventure novel I highly 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 recommend We the Drowned it was it was a page turner I mean it's a long book I think it's like 700 pages but I just flew through it and um I loved I loved it so much particularly Albert Matson, who's just such a fascinating character, not entirely likable. I mean, these are, these men um, exhibit some of the most exaggerated kinds of masculinity imaginable. These men are bestial at times, you know, they, they do things that are very immoral or very, um, 
they're just trying to survive and you know there is rape there is a lot of violence it's it's a very very exaggerated masculine uh, environment which i find particularly fascinating in literature because um, i don't know if you know but i love seafaring novels and um, after reading Lord Jim, Moby Dick, I, I want to read another one and, and I'm very, very glad I read We the Drowned. So if you bought this book, and I think a lot of booktubers did, uh, last year or the year before, I saw many, many people hauling this book because it has a beautiful, beautiful cover. But not many booktubers seem to have read it. I, I haven't found too many reviews. Um, I enjoyed it. I think it was wonderful. So that's my recommendation. And that's, that's all. So um, let me know if you've read any of these books. And um, I need to make these recent reads videos more often. <laughs> um, and uh, I will talk to you later. Bye now.